Angela, what do you think that the legislative elections could bring if the left gets it together and unites? Could we be looking at a power sharing government, perhaps a, a left prime minister with President Macron? It, it's absolutely unlikely. I think that Jean-Luc Mélenchon would be <laughs> prime minister. There is a hashtag, hashtag Jean-Luc Mélenchon, premier ministre. It's really unlikely. This guy is along the lines of Bernie Sand uh, Sanders yeah. in the US or Jeremy Corbyn in the UK. And that would absolutely not really represent or reflect the, the vote that the French have uh, the, the opinions they've expressed in this presidential vote, you know, Jean-Luc Mélenchon got 22% of the vote. That was all the left uh, voters behind him. That would not in any way reflect uh, how people have voted in this election. So, no, he will not be the next prime minister. As to whether he manages to unite all the other parties behind him, well, you know, as always, there are a lot of egos involved in, in any kind of election. It involves making deals with people at local level so that people will stand aside, so that another left-wing candidate can take their place. And, of course, in a parliamentary election, it's very much about your local implantation and the, rep the uh, reputation that any MP has in the local area. It's not just about the national colour you represent. Yeah. Thanks, Angela. We're just going to go now to Ellen Gainsford, who is in uh, the fiefdom, if we can call it that, of Marine Le Pen in Enam Beaumont. Uh, Ellen, what's the feeling like there? That's where Marine Le Pen voted earlier today. I bet a lot of long faces around there. Well, that's right, Jeannie. I have to say that uh, the result uh, wasn't what was uh, waiting, what people were waiting for here in uh, Enam Beaumont. Um, it's really the electoral heartland of uh, Marine Le Pen here. And uh, when we heard the, uh, the figures announced, uh, there was actually a collective uh, size of anger and of disbelief. And uh, we spoke to some people after the result was announced. And uh, one nurse, she told me that uh, she was worried that she would now have to work more to earn less and uh, that potentially her retirement could, she put, could be pushed back as uh, she has quite a physical job. And that's, of course, referring to uh, Macron's plan to potentially reform the pension system. Well, another lady told me that uh, she had voted for Marine Le Pen because uh, she felt like Marine Le Pen was closer to the people. And... Um, well, while uh, Marine Le Pen's uh, concession speech was playing here, there was uh, much applause, and especially at the period where uh, she was speaking about um, a forgotten France. And uh, has to be said that uh, although uh, Marine Le Pen might not be heading to the presidential palace tonight, in, uh, in one way she uh, really has uh, won a battle here in that um, she has succeeded in uh, normalising her party in many ways. And uh, many of the voters that we spoke to were impressed by her, um, her policies on uh, the um, purchasing power. And rather than voting for her, as a, as a protest vote, as we may have seen in previous years, that uh, they're voting for her because uh, they support her program. And that, in one way, is a, is a win for Marine Le Pen. Thanks for that, Ellen. Uh, Mathieu Doiré, let me bring you back in here. You are the polling partner from Ipso. So looking at 41% of the vote for Marine Le Pen, how will that translate, or will that translate, into the legislative well, election? We have a few cues, because we have asked voters uh, which parties they would like to uh, get reinforced or weakened by the next parliamentary elections. And it turned out that, predictably enough, uh, France Insoumise and Undaunt Undaunted France? Mm -hmm. yeah. Unbound. Unbound. Un <laughs> France Unbound. <laughs> unbound. It's a tricky France translation. Unbound. Yeah, <laughs> France Unbound and National Rally? Yeah, you would National say? Rally? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's like a would, quiz. Uh, <laughs> would be the ones that uh, the voters would uh, mo um, uh, prefer to, 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 to see gain additional seats, not the, it's not explicit whether they, they want them to counterbalance, check and balance Macron or really uh, constitute a, an alternative majority. And to be honest, this is very unlikely. And particularly a combined uh, extreme left, extreme uh, right majority. Uh, the other parties fare far uh, worse, and this is quite revealing. For example, uh, the Republicans, uh, uh, almost a majority of voters would like them to be weakened. Mm. It's important because they are the second largest party in Parliament, and this is very bad omen for them. And uh, al almost half uh, their uh, uh, faction is already uh, considering how they could save their seats by allying uh, with uh, uh, Macron's party. And just as a reminder, their presidential candidate got under 5% of the vote. Yeah, the and, uh, and basically uh, a lot of people who still consider themselves as Republicans voted for Macron 
in the first round. So I would say uh, what is certain is that uh, Le Pen actually she's uh, uh, elected in a I would say a constituency that is more or less Sunderland, you know, Tyneside. So she kind not she didn't bro break the red wall. She erected a blue wall. And you can see this blue wall in all the most uh, deserted uh, counties of France. And uh, alternatively, uh, for Mélenchon, it's a bit trickier to identify where you could really uh, win additional seats. Probably where the socialist uh, incumbents are, but there are very few of them. So it's not very clear what margin he still has. Matthew, thanks for that. We'll be keeping an eye on that in the coming weeks. As